Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back! Today, as as I promised, or as you guys voted, uh, we are going to play some Train Sim World 2. And as you can see, I finally got Spirit of Steam. So, we will be able to have a look at it. <laughs> I bet most of you probably have seen it. Uh, it's been out for a while now. How long was it? Like, two? Three months, uh, yeah, it's it's probably something like that. So, yeah, it's not not too new uh, DLC, but definitely one of the most interesting since steam locomotives were not part of the game until now or until this particular DLC. So it's. It is really going to be interesting. I have no clue how to drive one of those things in this game. <laughs> Especially when we are talking about uh, British uh, steam locomotives. Uh, because they operate slightly different than American ones. Uh, so that's going to be very, very interesting. And I expect some failures today, chat. 
I, I do expect some failures. So there's going to be quite a few instances of nothing happened, I guess. <laughs> I hope so. Or I, I hope there won't be. All right, anyway, um, without any further ado, let's jump into the game, shall we? Yeah, I, I believe we, we should do that. Uh, which button was it? Oh my goodness me. There we go. I, I, I think I pressed the right one. Yeah, I, I, I think we are now full screen. Perfect. Good. Uh, before I begin, uh, let's let's say hello to you, chat. Oh, the Greek Zeus. Hello, hello, Raliev. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> How is everyone doing? Right. In the meantime, as I'm waiting for your answers, let's load Spirit of Steam. So, I did that introduction video and and first mission. So, I roughly have an idea how to operate one of those things, but as you know, Dovetail is not the best at making tutorials. So I don't really feel confident to jump in on any of the missions and, and such. Uh, so perhaps let's continue the journey for now. And, and let's see... Uh, chapter... Wow, this has eight chapters. My goodness me. Uh, they really made a lot of missions for that uh, let's have a look at this uh, so I completed LMS Stanier class 8F introduction although yeah if I remember correctly according to the graph uh, I've been actually speeding with that thing believe it or not <laughs> uh, and I don't really know where the speedometer is in, in that thing to, to begin with uh, but yeah it, it was really fun experience <laughs> And we will see more of that, uh, definitely. Uh, but let's have a look at semaphore signaling, uh, because that is one of the new tutorials in, in this game. Uh, usually, Dovetail is not telling you anything about semaphores and how the signaling system works. Uh, so that is something different, something that Dovetail haven't done before. So let's have a look at this mission. Because even I am curious to find out what they got to say. Uh, hi Nam, hello, welcome to the stream. Uh, how are you doing? It's been a while since uh, since you joined us. And Dominic Toretto, hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to Ditton Junction. In this training module, we will learn how to read and react to semaphore signaling. Like that's the top loud. Right of a signal and speed limit display. These feature an indication of what is approaching and a countdown distance to when they will come to effect. Green indicates that you are clear to pass. The well, that, that's not the tutorial I was expecting. Yellow indicates that you can proceed, but with caution, as the next signal might be red or there could be a hazard. Red indicates that you should stop and should not pass this signal. No way. Wow, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> Some of these displays can be hidden by the settings menu for a more challenging experience. Now let's take a look at some of the signals we'll see on this line. There are two principal classes of signals. Home and starter signals. These are mandatory, and an approaching driver must stop if the signal displays a danger aspect. Okay. Distant signals. These are a warning. An approaching driver may pass the signal displaying a caution aspect, but must be prepared to stop at the following signal. The signal in front of you is currently displaying a danger aspect. That means the line ahead is not clear and you must wait. Okay, that's not too bad so far. Wait for the signal to clear. Uh, let me set the reverser. Cylinder cocks are opened. Uh, 
small adapter is going to be fully open. There we go. The signal in front of you has now cleared. The lower is closed. Uh, I need to open it. I, nah, I don't need it now. Stay vigilant and keep an eye out for the next signal. Proceed when ready. Okay, I, I think we are now ready to go. Okay, the question is, where is the speedometer? Uh, do we even have such thing? Of course we don't. Yeah, I really missed that too, Hainam, uh, but unfortunately I'm too busy with my apprenticeship and uh, all things related, so yeah, I, I can't really spare any more days. Uh, I also work one extra day a week, uh, usually, uh, just to get some extra money, because uh, my job doesn't really pay that well. <laughs> Regulator to fully open. I believe we will be entering wheel slip if, if I do that. Uh. Remember, you always just look at the heads up display. I'm sure. Let's move the reverser backwards. Uh, Fifty percent. Yeah. <laughs> you missed the jump scare notification. Well, people need to be a little bit more active for those to pop up. Okay, uh, we got green aspect or. As Americans used to say, uh, highball, which refers to very old signaling system they used. Okay, the one thing that I don't like about this or these locomotives is the fact that you don't really have speedometer, so you never know how fast you are driving. But I guess, as long as you don't crash, uh, I, I believe you should be perfectly fine. There we go. Okay, we got green signal aspect this time. Perfect, perfect was actually color light signal oh my goodness me looks like every now and then the game loses frames uh, for just a second to, to load some some extra stuff there we go it, it does that again for some reason every time I move my camera it's, it does that thing I, I'm not sure what's wrong with it okay we are steaming chat we are steaming let's Set the reverse at the 30%. Okay, I am driving under the speed limit because I'm getting some points, so that's probably a good indication of how fast I'm moving. We still got roughly around three miles to go. Although I will have to turn off those uh, indicators. I believe the game is turning them on on its own. Uh, so that's, that's not really helping. And I can't really remember which button signal. Oh my goodness me. 
did I? Uh, I, I probably missed one of the... Oh my goodness me. Right, so let's replay that. Oh, I probably missed one of those uh, distant signals and, and that's why I failed to stop at actual stop signal. So yeah, uh, definitely Welcome I need to some City training to, to be able module, to operate to uh, those trains. To uh, too bad I can't turn off this guy. In the top right, so he's gonna be obstructing us a little bit. Ouch, that hurts. Uh, well, I, I said that at the start of the stream. Uh, today we can expect some failures because there are many things I don't know about this particular DLC. Yeah, I don't use HUD. Uh, I want to learn how to operate things without HUD. Yellow indicates that you can proceed, but with caution, as the next signal might be red, or there could be a hazard. Red indicates that you should stop and should not pass this signal. Fantastic, but I'm not using that. Uh, come on, come on. Uh, now tell me about signals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Hopefully, this time I will succeed. Oh my goodness, this guy is moving so slowly. Home and starter signals. These are mandatory, and an approaching driver must stop. You could actually introduce like a button to skip it. Distant signals. These are a warning. An okay, and that's the one I missed. The that's why I failed to stop. But must be prepared to stop following the signal. The signal in front of you is currently displaying a danger aspect. That means the line ahead is not clear and you must wait. Oh, so there wasn't a distant signal. Oh, that's interesting. The signal in front of you has now cleared. However, the next distant signal could display caution, meaning that the following signal will be displaying the danger aspect. I think there must have been some distant signal and, and we missed it. Uh, we need to investigate that. Uh, right, uh, so let's set reverser. That's done. Uh, let's release the brake. Uh, let's open the ejector. Perfect. I'm not sure if, if you have to sound the horn in in the UK, but well. Oh, there we go. I was actually wheel spinning. Or wheel slipping. Close the cylinder cocks. If I only knew, how do I... Oh, there we go. That's how I can adjust the camera. We got this weird camera. We can look outside of this window. I don't really like this piece of glass. Uh, it, it actually... Yeah, it is actually making things worse. Oh well. Right. To me it looks like this signal was supposed to be... Is it? Is it gonna drop? Uh, for some reason that was showing... Yeah, okay, so that was our signal. So now let's have a look if, if we can find that distance signal that I missed last time. 
also looked at the heads up display and was unsure what the next thing was. There must have been something. Uh, I don't believe you will get like a red signal right after green. Although it's dovetail, so they might have made a few mistakes, and I wouldn't be surprised about that. Okay, let's set reverser down to 40%. That should be enough. Okay, I, I, I think I believe... Yeah, I, I think it's more comfortable to, to look through that window anyway. Can I? Oh, I can actually open it. Yeah, let's catch all those flies in our teeth. Okay, let's, let's close it. Okay, so that's the green signal. And yeah, there, there doesn't seem to be any indication that we are approaching a red signal. Okay, this one's also green, and there is no distance signal. This one just changed to green. See you later, Hainam. Thank you very much for joining us today and have a good sleep. Okay, we are now coasting. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, let's let's open the regulator. That was the red signal. Oh, okay. So we probably approached it a little bit too quickly and it failed to, to change. Because last time I've been driving much faster. For a second I, I thought we might be well slipping, uh, but that's not the case. Still got 1.7 miles to go. So yeah, I, I think it was a scenario error in, in that case. I can see no other explanation. Okay, we can let it coast now. Uh, we can set reverser to 75. Oh, that marker is obstructing me. Okay, uh, so we got distance signal now. And that is showing that... We are approaching signal at danger. Oh, this is shaking. Uh, let's use keyboard. There we go. Uh, let's give it 36% brakes. Just so that I can slow down. 
and be prepared to stop. Ah, uh, I hate those markers. Uh, okay. We can now release the brakes. And let's just let it coast. Hello, Zephyr. Welcome to the stream, and yeah, I, I look forward to that as well. It's gonna be super fun. Okay, that's green signal with yellow distance signal. Okay, okay, okay. So I believe semaphore at the end of the platform will be now at danger. So at this speed, we should have no issues. Stop. Nah, they are not that hard to read. Uh, if, if you know what they mean, uh, it's it's not really that hard. Uh, although in UK, yeah, they are not as clear as in other countries. And it sometimes gets confusing. Uh, it also depends on the color of, of the semaphore. So yellow one is a distance signal that tells you the state of the next semaphore or technically one of the next semaphores in, in case of UK. Uh, so the yellow one was uh, like in middle position which indicates that the next signal is uh, displaying signal at danger which means stop uh, so yeah basically that's that's what it is and yeah we are now approaching a stop location 200 yards to go lapis hello welcome to the stream i hope you will have a great time today Okay, 120 yards. Everything for this training module. Okay, that was pretty good. Oh, I was actually speeding at the end. Oh my. Oh dear lord. See, that's what I get for not having any speedometer in, in this thing. Oof, yeah, that's dovetail for you. That's that's why I don't really play uh, Train Sim World 2 uh, that often. Like those errors that dovetail makes is it's like so embarrassing to, to even see. The game works perfectly fine when you use all that UI elements, but that's that's not how you actually play those games. So yeah, it's it's like. I'm not fan of it. I'm I'm definitely not fan of it. Uh, but I have to admit that the game has pretty good graphics, and it looks so nice. It it looks it just looks so nice. It's like eye candy. But except that, yeah, they make so many mistakes that it's it's really pushing me away from this game. Anyway, uh, so we had. Uh, nice training module about signals uh, so uh, let's have a look 
uh, branch freight witness to speak junction uh, should we try it uh, let's give it a shot then. Okay, so we got 23 cars. Uh, we begin at Speak Junction. And we are heading to Ditton. Lovely. All right. Oh, and this time we got a helper. Perfect. Uh, so. Have a look. Okay, let's set reverser. Uh, cylinder tops are open. Perfect. Uh, so let's release the brakes. A uh, small ejector is fully opened. Perfect. Uh, I believe there used to be a a button to clear the uh, gate glass, uh, but I can't see it. Oh well, I, I will have to discover what this locomotive has to offer. Uh, I think there should also be... Oh, there is a roof vent. Uh, I'm not sure if there is a light. Oh, there is a lamp. That's much better. So we got lower, uh, we don't really need that. Uh, oh, yes, there it is. So we can drain that gauge glass. And then we can refill it. Is it actually filling? No, it is not. Uh, what is that? Tender break to blah blah blah. Light injector. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. So we got two injectors. Uh, I'm not sure how much water we actually have. Okay, enough messing around. Uh, we should now be ready to go. sure what that lever is for, but I, I'm sure I will find out at one point. There we go, that's much better. Was there any signal? I, I, I believe there wasn't. Railjet, hello, welcome to the stream. I hope you'll have a great time today. Yes, today I'm trying to learn how to use steam locomotives in Spirit of Steam DLC. Fully open the regulator. Uh, 
Greg, hello, welcome to the stream. I hope you'll have a great time today. Oh, uh, that's that's really nice. Uh, yeah, I, I really wish myself to, to like learn uh, how to drive one of those things, but I probably won't have a chance anytime soon. Okay, we have to go by at that location, so... Let's let it coast. I don't want to go too fast. I'm, I'm not sure what's the speed limit and how fast I'm going, to be honest. <laughs> Which is a bit of a problem. Okay, we got three and a half miles to go. Let's fully open that. Count sleepers. Oh my dear lord. I can't even see the sleepers. Come on, give me a break. But yeah, technically, back in the days, people were counting things like telegraph poles or, or, or stuff like that. Obviously, I can't see any along the line. Okay, we got another green signal. Two point eight miles to go. Well, I have to say it's not going to be a long journey, definitely. I think we are now climbing uphill, so I'm not really worried about our speed. My goodness me, this thing is shaking, isn't it? Look at this. Okay, we can now let it coast. Although that might be a bit too soon. Well, I'm sure we are driving under the speed limit, uh, because I'm getting those points. So, for now, that's going to be my indication, if, if I'm speeding or not. Am I running a good strain? Uh, I believe so. Uh, Right, uh, let me just apply some brakes. Okay, that is a distance signal. Okay, that should be enough. We can now let it roll. And yes, that is a good strain. Pretty good looking, isn't it? 
Right. Uh, chat, remind me to turn off those markers. Because uh, they are so annoying. In fact, I think there is a button. Uh, no, that's how you turn on FPS. Oh, that, that's how I can turn off everything. Uh, that's not what I want. Okay, that is a free camera. And I don't really need that just yet. Uh, how do I turn off that marker? Uh, there, there is a button for it, and I can't remember which one is it. Uh, that was like control. No. Oh, okay, 15 miles an hour. So I, I, I'm fairly sure I'm doing a little bit more than 15. one. How do I turn off those markers? Uh, there we go. Got the objective markers off. I don't really need them. Uh, because it's written in top left corner so I know roughly how far I am from top location. Okay, uh, let me just set the reverse uh, fully forward, just in case we need to add any throttle. And very slowly, we can roll in. That yard looks pretty nice. Uh, too bad that Dovetail uh, didn't introduce any shunting locomotives. Uh, it, it would be really nice to do some shunting around these yards. And apparently HP uh, is not the best for shunting. Okay, almost there. Adam, hello, welcome to the stream. I hope you'll have a great time today. How are you doing? Thank you very much for subscribing to me. Okay, as always, don't fail put a mark, uh, a stop marker, uh, very close to the signal. Although I believe for Spirit of Steam they pushed them back a little bit, so that's that's an improvement. Thirty yards. Okay, we are almost there, chat. Almost there. Now we can stop. Perfect. Stop at location as indicated. Uh, okay. Uh, 
so which which signal actually applies to me right now and if that is now weird yeah I, I am going forward that's for sure Okay, let's keep on rolling. Another 600 yards to go. I believe that left signal set is, is for me. Yeah, that's the one. yards okay I, I think we will have to reverse back um, to push the wagons onto the yard uh, I, I have a feeling that's that's exactly the thing that we are going to do apply some brakes okay let's apply some more brakes as we are going downhill That should do. Uh, speed A section zero seven. Okay. Uh, where is that? Uh, See, and that's the game, uh, that's the thing that the game doesn't really tell you so well. Uh, obviously, I could turn on marker and I see that, yeah, I, I need to reverse. Uh, but the game could actually inform you, hey, set your reverser to, to reverse because you are going to, to reverse there or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, again, it will come with experience uh, at the end of the day uh, because... UK Railways uh, basically rely on track knowledge and, and route knowledge so drivers need to actually learn how the route looks like and where things are uh, so they won't mess up uh, so yeah uh, that's that's the difference between Uh, between other railways uh, where things are equipped with slightly better signage on here. There we go. We are now pushing. Are we? Yeah. Yeah, chat. We are pushing. Now that's when that window will come in handy. Uh, I'm not sure how communication between signal men and uh, train driver actually worked back then. Uh, but yeah, I believe you would have to stop and wait for someone to come in, tell you that, or 
someone would be using some sort of flag or lantern system. Uh, voice. Well, yeah, technically they would shout at you, although you are very likely to not hear anything because how loud those engines are. Yeah, voice and foot, uh, exactly. So someone would have to leg it. Okay, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I can't really see any missing notification. Uh, also, uh, I could close the cylinder of dogs, that would probably help. Okay, 600 yards. Let's open the regulator a little bit, just to give us some power. Wagons are nicely rolling in. There we go, 400 yards. Let's give it a little bit of a push. Yards and how long is my turn? Mm. Uh, let me just quickly check it. Uh, 165 yards, okay. We need to push it a little bit further. Almost. Okay, we can now bring this bad boy to a stop. There we go. Well, even without any sort of speedometer, I, I actually managed to slow down to, to that 15 miles an hour just in time. And I kept it under the speed limit at all times, so that was pretty good driving. But I definitely need to find some way to measure my speed uh, a little bit more efficiently than judging it. <laughs> okay, that, that was pretty good, chat. That was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, clock face colliery, uh, whatever that, that is. Uh, perhaps... Let's go to the main menu. And let's just explore it on foot. Uh, how does that sound? Uh, we might catch a train. Uh, what kind of weather do we want? Uh, reservation. Well, definitely I don't want full fog. Uh, but perhaps a little bit of fog. Uh, let's set it up proper British weather. August 
such uh, sounds better. Wetness, yes, please. Has to be fully wet. Cloud level. Uh, let's let's give a little bit. Wind strength, yes, a little bit, and precipitation. How does that look, chat? Uh, does it look like British weather? I I think it might be a little bit better. Well, definitely temperature seems to be a little bit on a high side for September. 16.6 degrees Celsius, so uh, that's that sounds quite warm. It's usually around 14, 15 at that time. Oh well, that will do. Uh, where do we want to go? Uh, we can go to Liverpool Lime Street, Edge Hill. Are you still boiling in the UK? Uh, it's, it's not really that hot today, but yes, it's it's warm. It's warm this year. Uh, which is probably good, uh, to be honest. Uh, okay, let's, let's set it uh, somewhere closer during the day. Uh, perhaps. Uh, let's set it at noon. Yeah, sounds sounds good. Sounds like a good time for rail farming, you know. Yeah, let's let's do that. Uh, so we will begin at crew. I might try and catch uh, a passenger train to to Liverpool, perhaps. Uh, that that might not be a bad idea. Uh, we can ride as a passenger, although that that won't be too exciting. Uh, or we can try and, and drive the train, although I, I'm not the best with timetables. So if that's going to be a local train, which has some stops in the middle. And then probably those passengers won't be really happy about my driving. <laughs> anyway, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I will start this. Don't expect much traffic. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, because... Uh, Dovetail introduced only... Uh, 60 and 80 uh, locomotives. Your next train is at 1. Are you joking me now? Are you serious? Ah... Uh, should have told me... I would set like 12.45, so we got 15 minutes to explore the station. Okay. Uh, uh, schedule. Uh, 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 uh. Let's, let's try that again then, chat. Uh, I, I didn't realize that the next train is... Ah, oh, and I have to set it up again? Are you joking me? That number, preservation, wetness... The wetness might be a little bit lower. Cloud level, wind strength. Uh, let's, let's keep it somewhere in the middle. Perfect. And continue. And let's set it to 12. And it's an express service. Perfect. Uh, that's perfect. So what I'm going to do, we will set 12.45. And I will board that express service as a passenger and during that service uh, I will take a short break and then we'll have a chat and, and just travel in in that train uh, okay which platform is this oh okay I, I said ah I, I messed up chat I, I messed up twice in a row uh, that's 
I was supposed to change my start station to crew. Uh, uh, right, one more time. One more time. Three times a charm, they say. Three times a charm, chat. Uh, oh, dear lord. Why, why those bars are resetting every time you change them on? Uh, okay, that's that's good. And I want to start at crew. At 12. Ah. Okay, uh, perhaps let's let's go this way, and that's gonna be 12.45. So we got approximately 15 minutes. There we go, that, that's gonna work now, that, that, that is going to work. Ebos, hello, welcome to the stream, I hope you'll have a great time today, and Luigi Rota, hello, hello, uh, nice to see you. Okay, uh, so... We are at cruise station and the train is supposed to arrive somewhere uh, or perhaps it is already at the platform and I just don't know about it. Okay, okay. Yeah, that sad part about this DLC. Uh, there is literally no traffic uh, because Dovetail can't really introduce much of it uh, as they only have a handful of engines. Well, handful. They, they don't even have handful. Uh, they literally got two engines and a few wagons. So there's not that much descent on the tracks and their arguments to keep this thing empty uh, is basically they don't want to send a whole bunch of copy paste trains and they will rather populate this line a little bit more uh, when they introduce more engines into the game especially more engines from that era uh, because I, I, I think this route is set in like uh, early 60s late 50s or something like that oh dear oh dear lord what happened here right I know you can do some 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 yeah, 1955 or 56. Yeah, so it's somewhere, somewhere around there. Uh, isn't that the year when uh, when they were starting to to roll out uh, some diesel engines as well? Uh, so, yeah, perhaps they will be able to populate this line a little bit. Beware of trains! Oh my dear lord, we have to beware of trains, Chad. that what was that I think that was tutorial okay we don't need tutorials we got beautiful British weather platform 2 I'm actually not sure at which platform the train will arrive So we have to be vigilant or stay vigilant and look around. Uh, the train is about to arrive in like 10 minutes. I think it's going to be 10 minutes. Uh, right. Uh, what I wanted to find is is all those things that you can do around the stations like posters and stuff uh, I did a poster because you have to do it during tutorial uh, but I'm not sure what else there is to find and that station is massive a couple of 
night. Oh, I can climb up. There we go. Why is it released? Uh, it must be applied. There we go. Well, that's that's an interesting caboose. I can lit the fire. Oh, yay! Now it's nice and cozy. Okay, so we got also a vacuum brake charge, which is nice. Is it actually steaming? It is steaming! Oh my lord! They actually... There we go. Wow! Dovetail actually did a good job on that one. Okay, let's close it. Okay, nothing's coming yet. flower pots oh okay I, I found a fire bucket I believe there should be one on each station there should be one more thing to do uh, and, and I'm not sure what that is platform 2 Oh, you can't access this area. That's that's a shame. Uh, Boxcar the Husky. Today we are driving and traveling in general. On some British railways, and and those are nice steamy choo-choo's that that we are going to be driving. Sometimes as a driver, sometimes as a passenger. Because why not? Oh, is that? Oh, nice. Why is why is it always handbrakes release? This should be applied when the weapon is stationary on that keyboard. So that is some sort of a mail car, I believe. Really nice, really nice. I like it. Right, where's my train? Oh my dear lord, what time is it? Where are the clocks? Why why there are no clocks on this station? Chat, tell me that. What is wrong with uh, with UK in, in those times? Why there are no clocks? Parcels, okay. So that is going to be post office. Okay, where's my train, chat? Where's my train? There's supposed to be a train at... One. And it's currently... Oh, okay, it's 12.53, so... Seven minutes, chat. Seven minutes! Check the map. Uh, I I could eventually map. Uh, 
is it actually going to show me things on the map? Uh, press 9. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I forgot about this map. Uh, oh, dear lord. The map is actually huge. Oh, I can switch things. There it is, chat, there it is. It is coming. Oh, and there is a freight train moving around. There we go. Chat, there is a train coming, but I'm not sure on which track. think this one might be going around the station perhaps I'm not sure anymore oh there it is there it is chat there we go I think that's gonna be the express train that we are waiting for. So, what I'm going to do, uh, let me just find some nice compartment, excuse me, perfect. Uh, do we actually want to sit in a compartment or do we prefer like a shared space? Uh, compartment seems more cozy, isn't it? Yeah, sounds good. Right, chat, for now. For now, I will take a short break, so we're gonna stay in that car until I will come back. And just in case the train will actually depart before I will come back, we will actually catch it, so I'm gonna stay here. If I will come back before the train departs, uh, we might jump into locomotive and, and try, try to drive it, although... Did it just stop training? Was is that what? Oh, and turn heater on. Yeah, there we go. Heat, heat that compartment. Can I open the window. Oh, okay. Now the sound came back. That's interesting. Oh, the lady decided to just get off the train eventually right anyway chat i'm gonna take a short break and when i come back uh, we shall decide what are we going to do next and for now enjoy the ride if, if it starts before i come before i'm back
Oh well, uh, looks like the train managed to depart. Uh, so, oh, oh my dear lord. Uh, let's have a look uh, at interiors of, of the wagons uh, while the train is moving. We can open some windows. Another first class wagon. Can we? Oh, we can't rent the toilet. No, we can close the compartments. I believe normally passengers would keep it close anyway. So it would be nice if if those would close automatically when the train departs. Okay, we got some windows that we can open. But the those are Okay, so this is a second class wagon. Uh, that looks pretty nice, to be honest. We got some tables. You can play cards or, or, or whatever. That's really nice, really nice. Uh, I believe all of them will look exactly the same. Yeah. There's really no need to... ...move around. We can set the external camera. Look at it go! Oh my goodness me. That's really quick. Oh, okay, okay, so there's some sort of like a mail, com uh, mail compartment. With red lamp, yeah. <laughs> Ceylon. Uh, I believe uh, what they did uh, each time uh, a train spawns, uh, it spawns with uh, different locomotive, isn't it? Uh, there are like 30 or 40 different uh, names for, for those locomotives. So this one's Ceylon. But there can be other ones. My goodness me, this train is going really fast. Uh, there's one thing that bothers me about this route though. Uh, I don't really see too many like uh, speed limit signs or or whatever. Uh, it's it's just the semaphores. Uh, there's nothing else. And I believe at at those times, uh, like there were some signs to indicate the speed limits and and stuff. And I can't see anything like that here. Uh, I'm not sure if Dovetail as always forgot to. introduce those and and put them along the line or if they were not or if that line was not equipped with such signs there we 
go. Oh, this is slightly different camera. What was that? Uh, do we have any form of free camera? I, I don't think so. There we go, that was quick. Yeah, true. Uh, British routes are generally not equipped with too much signs and, and signals. On Tuesday we will have Train Sim World 3. Uh, what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What? What's Train Sim World 3? Uh, is, is there something that I missed? Probably I did. I, I, I haven't been following the development of, of this game recently. Wait, are they for... Are they for real? Why would they release Train Sim World 3 if... Oh, what a scam. That, that is scam. But... Train Sim World 3. That's unbelievable. And... Uh, and knowing Dovetail, they're gonna ask to to buy it again. Uh, I, I'm not doing that, chat. Not a chance. That is ridiculous. Oh my dear lord. I wonder what is the uh, what is the excuse this time uh, when they released uh, Train Sim World 2? Uh, I believe the excuse was uh, upgrades uh, of the game engine and and physics, which was apparently not possible in Train Sim World 1. My goodness me, uh, Dovetail is, is absolutely shameless. So I, I wonder what they are going to introduce in Train Sim World 3. Uh, and how are they going to roll it out. Uh, if that's going to be free upgrade, then that's fine. But yeah, I doubt it. They will probably release like three short routes. And they won't introduce anything that's actually new into the game. Oh, there we go. The train is slowing down. I hope they put a Starbucks in the new game. Oh, dear lord. Why would we need a Starbucks? bundle of routes and free upgrades uh, I mean technically at this point if, if they are going to introduce train sim world 3 it kind of makes no sense like uh, I don't get it I, I literally don't get it Unless, unless, 
Train Sim World 3 will have multiplayer. There is no point to release it. That that's my opinion. Uh, because what they are facing now is uh, SimRail that is about to release soon. Uh, I'm not sure when exactly. But technically we are getting close to SimRail uh, release. And that will have multiplayer. And obviously like completely different region and, and stuff. And the demo was pretty good. Uh, it wasn't perfect, don't get me wrong. Uh, but many people claim that it's gonna be a competition for Train Sim World. Uh, so they have to step up the game somehow. Uh, UE5, yeah, uh, that that might be the thing. Uh, it will give them more realistic graphics and, and stuff. Uh, but again, oh, that's that's really bad. TS20XX. Uh, in fact, they they changed the name to Train Simulator Classic, and I don't think they're gonna change the name again. Uh, that was one good upgrade. So everyone received Train Simulator Classic and obviously there was a bundle or upgrade bundle where you could get some routes with it. Uh, I, I think I bought one of those routes and, and that was pretty fine. Uh, but yeah. Train Sim World 2 uh, or Train Sim World 3 literally makes no sense to, to me at this point. They already got good graphics and, and they are struggling with performance anyway. Uh, so Unreal Engine 5, I'm not sure if, if that's going to give them enough leverage to make the players buy uh, Train Sim World 3 if, if it's gonna get released anytime soon. But yeah, if it has something new, like let's say multiplayer that they technically promised for Train Sim World 2 at some point, uh, then that would make sense to release it as a separate product and and ask people to pay like 20 or 30 pounds but again I, I don't think they actually figured out uh, how how to introduce multiplayer into train simulator game uh, because for that you need substantial routes you can't really have 50 mile long journey because that makes no sense to, to really have multiplayer so they would actually need to introduce longer routes I mean lack of support for older consoles makes sense uh, like I'm kind of surprised that developers are still limiting themselves to Xbox 360 and and whatever this is old generation and, and it should be forgotten. I know that there are many players uh, who still use those consoles because why not? Uh, but technology goes forward and the software should follow and, and limiting everything and cutting it down just because it has to run on a very old equipment. Uh, yeah, it makes no sense. Uh, it really makes no sense. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. When they will announce anything or when they will say anything, I will look into that. But uh, at this point, if, if that's not going to be something substantial, I don't see the point to switch to Train Sim World 3. Unless you can actually port your DLCs from Train Sim World 2 to Train Sim World 3 and they will 
work perfectly fine and get some upgrades to the new engine and stuff. Like literally switching to Train Small 3 will make no sense. And obviously they would need to introduce some some good routes with it uh, to to make the players buy it. Otherwise, what's the point? Ooh, chat, I love that bridge. I absolutely love that bridge. In fact, let's catch some screenshots. Beautiful. Uh, looks like we are approaching Runcorn, is it? Uh, I, I think it was Runcorn. Oh, this bridge is really nice. There we go, we got another screenshot. Absolutely beautiful chat. That's one of the reasons why I sometimes like to jump into a train as a passenger in Train Sim World. Uh, like you got that nice external camera, you don't really need to focus on driving the train because AI is doing the thing. And you can just go around and catch some nice views and screenshots. That's that's really nice thing about this game. Uh, but yeah. There are also some drawbacks and, and everyone knows how Prince and Wall works <laughs> or don't. Uh, yeah, uh, I live right between Manchester and Liverpool. Uh, so near those areas uh, although I'm not living along this particular route. In fact, uh, the route that's going through the town where I live, uh, I believe it was the oldest railroad in the world, or the oldest route in the world. And you can actually get it in Train Simulator Classic. There we go. Yeah, I, I think that was run from. Oh, look at those yards, chat. I would love if Dovetail would introduce some small steam engine to do shunting along these yards. That, uh, that would enhance this DLC by 100%. And that would probably be one of the DLCs I would buy uh, in the near future. Uh, because I have to say that Spirit of Steam, it it is really nice, uh, but but it shares that typical issue uh, that Dovetail has, uh, which is when they introduce new routes, uh, they usually have to introduce a whole bunch of new engines to populate uh, the area with, with some trains, AI trains and whatever. And obviously with Spirit of Steam, uh, they were kind of experimenting with steam locomotives so they did a really good job on whatever they released but it's very empty because there is only those two locomotives and they are not good for shunting so all you have is express trains uh, probably some local stopping services and freight trains and that's it uh, you can't really do any any switching or shunting which is a bit of a shame 
and I think that's what they should release in, in the near future to, to populate this this map so definitely small tank engines uh, perhaps one or two different uh, locomotives that would fit in that era and populate those tracks with other services yes it, it is super empty and, and that that is a huge problem Okay, how far are we? Uh, okay, okay. We are almost at the end. It's not really that far from Liverpool Lime Street. Uh, I believe we are now approaching Edge Hill. That's not it yet. Uh, that actually looked pretty abandoned. Screenshots. Yeah, and, and that should be Edge Hill. Oh my dear lord. My frames actually dropped uh, as soon as the train arrived in this area. So it is huge, it is absolutely massive. Yeah, another thing that they need to fix uh, is that camera that's jumping every time the train passes next to some obstacle uh, you probably noticed that there we go so every time the train passes next to a signal or anything that's that's an object the camera gets closer to the train uh, which is kind of weird it doesn't really clip through that equipment uh, which gives that really weird effect like you are flying a drone and you really need to avoid obstacles with the camera otherwise you will get some weird flickering if this camera uh, oh okay I, I can set it up differently uh, let's see if this camera will make those weird jumps oh okay this camera is not doing that so I can actually set it and it will probably clip through obstacles there we go that's much better Okay, the question is, where are we now? Uh, uh, I, I 
I failed to read it. Uh, we're getting there, chat. We're getting there, I, I'm sure of it. I believe we are now getting very, very close. Okay, the train is slowing down. Uh, is there any any sort of? My goodness, what is that abandoned station now? Okay, so we are heading into the tunnel. Is it? Or is it not? And we are approaching a stop signal. So that is probably Liverpool Lime Street. Yes, indeed. Okay, we got another signal. At danger. Or was that... Oh, that was for distance signals. Yeah, those... Uh, round signs. Okay, perfect. We are switching some tracks. Uh, but I believe on the approach to Liverpool, there should be a tunnel. But I couldn't see such thing here. Rather than tunnel, we are now... Arriving at Liverpool Lime Street. Oh, this is Edge Hill. Uh, yeah, sounds... Sounds... Reasonable. Yeah, uh, it looks like Edge Hill. Um, is it? Yeah, that is Edge Hill. Okay, okay, so that explains everything. Uh, because I, I was expecting to, to see a tunnel. Uh, there is a tunnel. Uh, quite long. And I believe that's the one. Yep, and it goes underneath... Liverpool city center and it's at the end of that tunnel or, or this lowered section right now it's, it's literally a tunnel uh, where Liverpool Lime Street is and it looks kind of similar uh, in real life
What? Chat. Do you see something unusual? Like I don't know why, but I have a feeling that these passengers are like a bit flat. What? If that's a bug, then it's it's really funny one. Oh dear lord. Like, they literally look like 2D models. It's... Uh, look how disturbing that is. Oh, oh dear lord. Space saving passengers. Oh, oh my dear lord. Well, that's dovetail quality for you. Okay, but these passengers are 3D. These are not. How did that went through Q&A? <laughs> when train tickets are getting expensive, so you buy only half a seat. <laughs> oh... <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> yeah, but it, it looks like... Oh, okay. They, they now disappeared. Uh, the train stopped. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, that, that was so funny. Okay, that's, that's the only place that we haven't really looked at. Okay, so that's where train director it and that's probably like a luggage cage <laughs> they got scared because all of hate on their looks <laughs> right chat welcome to Liverpool Lime Street uh, in all honesty the, the Lime, Street, uh, Lime Street station looks completely different right now it is still a terminal uh, or terminus station, so trains don't really have any way to continue the journey. Uh, but you don't really have that direct street access anymore. Uh, that's that's gone already, and the station building is pretty much. Well, all that what you see inside here is pretty much a station building, and this, and it's not at the street level. Uh, it's, it's far higher. Well, it is higher. Uh, and you have like massive steps. Uh, Spider, hello, hello, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, yeah, my apologies, I, I, I failed to. Uh, to tell you, uh, the clock is still there, to be honest. Uh, so if you arrive at Liverpool Lime Street, that clock is literally in the same place. Uh, you got some store boutiques in, in that area. And in that corner, there is actually toilets. Uh, that's what is on current... Liverpool station. Uh, you don't really have tickets anymore. Uh, you buy everything electronically, so I, I can't remember if if you still got any way to, to buy a ticket from a person. Uh, I, I think it's only ticket machines right now. <laughs> After Train Driver 2, this feels not that interesting. Uh, well, there are benefits to Train Sim World. Um, it definitely has a lot more uh, different trains and, and regions in it. Uh, so you can discover different areas and, and drive along different railroads. Uh, 
but the quality is very questionable. Uh, whoever played Train Sim World uh, probably knows what I'm talking about. And and yeah, sometimes it's it's very dodgy. Uh, so Dovetail needs to improve on on that field. Uh, single player scenarios, well, that's a very limiting factor for them. Although there is a field to, to improve, uh, you can simply look at uh, Machina, which is another simulator that, that I feature on this channel from time to time. Uh, it's also mostly single player game, uh, still based in Poland. And some of the scenarios are really interesting there. Uh, you really get some scenarios where you do some shunting, then uh, you pick up your consist, that, that consist is being brought by a different locomotive, you have to do some switching, and and so on and so on. And in Train Sim World 2, you usually get only back and forth route, and, and there's not really that much you can do. Uh, right, the question is, does AI perform any sort of reversing maneuvers or how does that work? Or do they just disconnect from the wagons? And there's another locomotive that, that's coming in and picking up the uh, picking up the consist. Uh, not sure how this is organized, honestly. I would love to see that, uh, but I believe we, we really want. Uh, which is a shame. Yeah, chat, uh, that's Spirit of Steam. Ah, so there is another locomotive that's arriving and then picking up the coaches. Uh, yeah, sounds sounds like a plan. Uh, is there going to be anything arriving uh, actually in the game or do they just stop and, and fill up all the platforms until you decide to quit the game? Uh, not sure how that's gonna work. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, in these days you don't really see that. Oh, there is a turntable here. Okay, so, so yeah, probably this bad boy will reverse onto the turntable. I wonder if we will be able to see that maneuver, and it's gonna pick up those cars. Uh, that sounds like something that's going to happen really soon. 1455, next departure. Oh dear lord. One hour. Um, not a chance, chat. Not a chance. Uh, what I'm going to do... Let's go to main menu. Right, chat. I, I don't think there is anything else to, to show you about this DLC. Uh, we've seen 60, uh, we've seen 80, and, and that's pretty much it that it offers. And, and we've pretty much seen entire routes. Uh, we went from, uh, what was it, uh, crew, all the way to Liverpool Lime Street. So. I, I don't think there is anything else I, I could show you today uh, about this. Uh, obviously, as always, you got livery designer, uh, so you can. Uh, that's probably more like uh, for everything, is it? DRA, yeah, that's that's for. Uh, that's for everything. Uh, oh, okay. You can you can actually do jubilee locomotive and, and stuff uh, so that's another stuff uh, you got scenario planner uh, but I'm not sure how that works uh, so if anyone is able to create scenarios or knows how to do those I, I believe you can only designate where you start and where you finish and, and that's it and it's super clunky from what I can see. And you can't even change the zoom, which is, uh, that, that is painful. Oh, and, and that, that really doesn't move. Uh, so, yeah, um, 
typical stuff that, that you get with the game. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, you can continue journey or you can play scenarios which well there are only six scenarios five trainings you can explore things on foot uh, or you can drive one of the timetable services using LMS Stanier 8F which we drove at the start of the stream or LMS Jubilee uh, otherwise known as 6T locomotive or 6 yeah I, I think it's 60 uh, and you can take some passenger services uh, obviously as always you can set your weather and, and select continue to explore different departures from various places uh, so you can go from Liverpool Lime Street to Chester uh, you can take a very short scenario from Edge Hill to Edge Hill Sheds, etc. And etc. I, I don't think there is any. Where's the site express? London, Euston, Liverpool, Lime Street. Oh, okay, so that is going along the entire route. And it takes 40 minutes uh, to get from one end to another. And so it's not the longest route, as you can see. Um, there's definitely something that everyone can learn uh, because you need to learn where the speed limit starts and ends uh, I'm not sure if, if there was any signage for that I couldn't see anything uh, to be honest with you guys uh, so there is some learning for me to do uh, I need to find out how the drivers knew in which place speed limit starts or or, or finish um, because yeah as you could see, the train wasn't just going 70 miles an hour all the way. Uh, it's been going faster and slower. Uh, and it was pretty much slowing down constantly since around middle of the route. Uh, so there are slow sections and you need to know where they start uh, or where they begin and what kind of signage or signals are there to indicate that. Uh, obviously, semaphores are not really telling you that. Uh, on their own and uh, because that's not how uh, signaling system in UK works and uh, they just tell you if you can go stop or if you are heading in diverging direction uh, but they don't really tell you the speed limits uh, as opposed to let's say Polish signaling which is also telling you what kind of speed limit that signal introduces uh, so that is the difference and you need to find out how to read various sites and, and things in order to efficiently operate those locomotives. So there is some challenges, something to learn for everyone. Uh, and obviously there is that tiny little bit of hope uh, that Dovetail will actually introduce some more engines into the game that would fit on that route and populate it uh, at one point because right now it feels very empty and like there's no way that Liverpool Lime Street would be so empty uh, in the middle of the day uh, there's always at least one or two trains waiting for departure there's always something arriving it's it's not the biggest station ever but it's definitely busy uh, same goes to Edge Hill well Edge Hill is probably not not as uh, busy as, as Lime Street uh, but it has some similarities. Uh, I'm not sure about crew station, but again, it's about 60 miles away from uh, Liverpool. So yeah, crew is very empty and it shouldn't be that empty. Uh, so yeah, chat, uh, that was Spirit of Steam for you uh, from, from my perspective. It's not a bad DLC, but if I gotta be honest, uh, it, it feels a bit overpriced uh, at this moment for the amount of content it delivers rather than quality, because quality is pretty good. Uh, for a dovetail, I have to say this is a really good quality DLC, but it needs a little bit more content, more trains, definitely more services more scenarios especially some shunting and, and, 
and switching. Uh, this this kind of scenarios are very welcomed. Uh, some different engines to, to populate this uh, this route. That's what's needed. Uh, so when I believe it right now costs around 25 British pounds or any any local currency equivalent uh, that, that you might be using in your country. And so yeah, it, it feels a bit expensive, but it's rather new DLC. So uh, again, it, it will take some time uh, for the price to eventually drop or for the DLC to appear in, in some sort of uh, bargains or, or discounts. Uh, but if you can catch it with, with some discount, it's definitely worth taking. One of the DLCs that I would somewhat recommend. Uh, the other one is Dresden Risa route. Um, it's probably the best DLC they, they released so far when it comes to German routes. And yeah, uh, that's that's strange symbols too for you. Uh, the drifter from the hours. Uh, hello, welcome to the stream. Although uh, you you hit the probably right timing, uh, well, wrong timing because I'm about to wrap it up. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, welcome, welcome, and uh, well, whatever you missed uh, so far, uh, you will be able to rewatch it on YouTube as soon as the stream finishes. And for the future, I always stream, at least recently, I always stream on Fridays at 5 p.m. So that's my standard starting hours. Uh, 5 p.m. UK time, obviously, so uh, whatever time zone you live in, you have to check what will be your local time. Uh, so that is for the future, for everyone who doesn't know that. Perhaps yeah, there we go. Let's let's switch to more appropriate screen. Uh, so chat, that was it. Uh, you know my opinion about Dovetail. You know my opinion about some of their practices and uh, quality of of their stuff. And I have to say this DLC is pretty good quality. However, it lacks content, and and that's that's what I can say. If you can get it a little bit cheaper than it is being sold uh, right now. Uh, then I strongly recommend grabbing it and, and picking it up, adding it to your library. And this is definitely really good DLC. And there is something that you can learn, do some research of your own and keep improving on, on driving those steam locomotives. And they are really fun to drive. And from what I remember, uh, Dovetail is going to make it a little bit more entertaining when they will remove that automatic fireman and you will be able to, to act as a fireman on your own uh, which will add uh, extra flavor to uh, to the game uh, so yeah definitely that was really fun and i might come back to it at one point uh, to, to show you some progress if i will be playing this game at all uh, because lately i don't really have time to play games uh, but yeah thank you very much uh, for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, give the video a like. Uh, if you haven't subscribed me, uh, subscribed to me yet, uh, then yeah, press that red button. It really helps my channel grow. If you are watching me on Twitch, uh, then obviously check that follow button uh, and, and, and just smash it uh, once uh, should be sufficient. And, and, and then yeah, you can also join my Discord. You can find the link under the player on Twitch or in video description on YouTube. And finally, uh, if you really want to support my channel, uh, there is also that membership on YouTube uh, where you can join the crew member uh, or become a crew member and you will receive some extras uh, that you can use uh, while chatting or sending comments under my videos. Right, thank you very much everyone and see you next week. Bye bye.